Right, hi everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Imanshu and we are continuing to understand and learn about Apex through our Salesforce Developer Masterclass. For those of you who are new to this channel, subscribe for more of this content and start this playlist from chapter 1. We are about in the 80th, probably around 80 chapters is something that we've completed and this is use case 28 of our understanding Apex. For those of you who are following along, pause the video here, give this use case a try comment below the code and i'll probably review and let you know how it goes and for those of you who want to continue with me writing code side by side let's get started so the use case says categorize all cases by their origin and return a collection of all the cases so you have something called the case origin on the case object right wherein you mention what is the origin is it from web is it from phone is it from whatsapp is it from this or that so the requirement says that you need to categorize all your cases meaning for each case origin you need to have the set of cases which are basically of that same type meaning you would have to create a collection wherein you would have key value pairs where key would be the case origin and value would be the list of cases which have that origin did that get clear so if you are good with what the use case demands pause the video now and give the use case a try write the code yourself try writing it yourself share the code in the comments and let me know how it goes that will help me understand how good are you getting with the learnings that probably you know that are coming out of this apex tutorials all right i hope you have done that and now let's get started with the use case and i'll go ahead and start writing that code I am going to create my new Apex class, Apex use case 28 and this is probably the second last use case that we are doing and then we'll jump into another topics, right? Okay. So for now the use cases would be done and yeah, this is the second last one. All right. So do like the video. This is about the 28th use case we are doing. All right. Now let's go to VS code and I am going to create a method. And I'll say generate cases by origin. All right. I don't really need any kind of method inputs here because I'll be querying the case objects. Okay. I'll be querying the case object records. However, what should be the type of return type that this method should return? It should essentially return things like this. It should return for web. I have case one, case two, case three. For phone, I have case 7, case 9, right? And then for WhatsApp, I have case 6 and then case 5. So what does, what kind of collection does this look like to you? Yes, this is a map collection, right? And inside the map, you would have key value pairs. The key would be a string, which would be nothing but the case origin and the value per string or per key or per case origin is the list of cases. Did this get clear to you? Do you understand why this kind of collection has been created? Because of how we want to send the data as. Alright, so I'll make it cases by origin map is equal to new map string comma list of case. And that's our initialization right there. And that will also be the return type of our method. Okay, this would be the return type and I'm going to just say return cases by origin map so my stub or my method template is ready and now we can actually fill in code in between and be good with it I'll just try to deploy it and see if it gets deployed so there's some issue it says illegal assignment I've made some mistake maybe let's see okay I've made list of cases but the object name is case so this should be case okay case 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 all right cool now let's try to deploy and this gets deployed fine so our template is ready okay now what do we want to do we basically want to query out all our cases okay so i'll go ahead and say case records select id comma origin from case limit 50000 because there's a limit of 50000 correct for each Sockle query, you get only 50,000 records. 
So I'm getting my case records in this particular query. I've just queried two things, the ID and the origin. What else can I add? I can probably add the case number. All good. All right. What do we want to do now? We basically want to iterate over all the records that we have in the query and then populate the map collection. Correct. So what I'll do is I'll say for each case, case record in case records list. Correct. I have this map variable and I'll simply say case by, cases by origin map dot put case rec dot origin. This is my key and case rec as the value, right? So will this populate my map as expected? Yes, it will. So it is going to populate the map as let's say if I just go ahead and try to query this out on the developer console. And let's see how this looks like. Basically, you have each case number with the origin, right? Your phone, web, I think these are the only two. But if you see for phone, the first record will get inserted here in the map and it will basically be for phone, comma case record. The second record will be for web. The third record will be for phone. But now understand the third record is for phone and the key always has to be unique. So the latest record will always be put and the previous record will be overwritten. So there's some issue with this code with this particular line, right? What we are doing is we are mapping each case to its origin, but we want to map one origin multiple cases, all the cases club together. So this case record is not the correct thing. This should be a list because that's the return type. Correct. So this is not the right way. What do I need to do? I need to basically create a list of case cases by origin is equal to new list. All right. And what can I do? I can simply say cases by origin dot add this case record. And what I can do is instead of using the case record, I can pass the list variable here. Does this sound fine? So now what will happen? Let's take a look. If there are 100 cases, the first case will come in here a list will be created. The list will get will add that particular case record and it will add the list here per origin. But now if you notice when you go to the loop for the second time, you come to the for loop for the second record, the list is getting reinitialized. Right? But it should, it should not reinitialize every time. Because if it reinitializes every time, this is empty because it's instantiated here. So then it will only add one value all the time and that value will come up here. The final, the last value is the value that will show up here. Did that make sense? So there's still some issue with this code, with this line of code. So to handle the scenarios wherein you have a collection inside a collection, what do you need to do? You basically need to, first of all, let me just write it in English for you and then you can understand. What will I do? I'll check for each record. If my map has a key, meaning it already contains the case origin. Don't create a new list. Just append the case to the current list. If my map does not have the case origin, meaning I need to create a new entry with a new list with this particular case record added. And that is how you'll solve most of your collection problems just by understanding this four lines. Okay. See, initially what will happen when you populate this map, when this map, map will get populated, it is currently empty. Correct. So for the very first time, when the first record, when the first case record comes, if my map has a key, currently does it have a key? No, it does not have a key. So it will create a new put entry, which is this put entry, and it will add that new list to the put method. But the second time when the case record comes in the loop, if the map already has a key, let's say in this scenario, the origin was phone for the very first record, 
the map did not have anything so it created a put entry it added phone as the key and the case as the value in the list all right now the second scenario it's again the case origin is phone so now this time does the map already have a key yes it does so if it already has a key don't do anything with the key just modify the value by appending the new case to the current list all right so how are you going to do that in salesforce now so what you'll do is you'll say if cases by origin map dot contains key case rec dot origin what is this code going to do it is basically going to check if my map already contains the key which is the case rec origin or not phone or web if it already contains it what do i do i simply modify the value by saying case by origin map dot get case rec dot origin what will this do this will get me the values remember the map variable map collection we discussed we discussed these methods get put right what does get do it accepts a key parameter and it returns you the value of that particular key right so map dot get and i'm passing the key which is if it contains the key it will contain the key so i'm just saying dot get what is this going to return this is going to return a list of case because that's the value and i can simply say dot add case rec at the end this line is essentially doing one thing it already has a key on the map and for that key it is appending by saying add here it is appending the case record to the list of case collection as simple as that okay else if it does not contain the key meaning it's a new scenario so in case it is a new scenario this code is valid for the very first time you have to create a new list and you have to add that case record here and you need to put that origin and that case list together so this code will only run for the very first time per case origin and then every time this if condition will run and it will keep on appending the case record to that same origin all right let me get rid of the english language here because the salesforce language makes sense this right uh, map collection makes sense uh, on the comments so that i know that as able to help you understand this bit i'll just go ahead and say deploy first of all let's see if it gets deployed or not i think cases by origin is a duplicate name that i've used let's see i'll just call it cases by origin list all right let's try to deploy it again taking some time so if it's taking time it's always good all right so this has been deployed and let me quickly try to show you the end result okay so i'm going to say execute and this is 28 and what is my method name it is generate cases by origin execute executed fine let's take a look at the debug only log and if you notice you see for phone type you have this case id these are all the cases with origin phone right and if you continue you continue these are all under phone these are all under phone it has not shown the entire log but let me do something let me try to show you how this code is executing okay by using some debug logs system.debug entered this code for case rec dot case number all right with source as case rec dot origin all right so this line will tell you for which is the record currently in question what is the loop record currently okay i'll put a log here or let's not put a log here it's important that you understand that the else condition is only going to run twice right so i'll say entered the else condition to populate the case source case rec dot origin okay now let's take a look let's deploy it one more time so this log will be printed for all the case records and this will only be printed when the map does not contain that key right so i'll just go ahead and say execute and i'll just say execute one more time close the old debug log open the new debug log 
debug only and you see now it entered the else condition to populate the case source phone that's one and then when the first time it the first time it found the phone it entered and it entered the map with a new list phone it used the same key so it did not give you this debug log again then it found a new case origin web so it entered the else condition to populate web and then rest is history for all of the scenarios the map already contains the key so it was only appending the values make sense so how many keys are there in this particular map collection there are only two keys web and phone how many values are there per record so you can count it based on the number of cases that are there with web versus with phone make sense so this is essentially everything that you would need to actually use maps like a pro okay i will have a separate set of tutorials a proper explained series around map collections because it gets tricky a lot it gets a lot more complex when you have to involve a lot of s objects but essentially if you are able to understand line 6 to line 13 as a beginner or maybe a intermediary somehow that's great news okay so just write that in the comment that you were able to understand it and what would be better is you if you comment below and you explain the same thing to me the way i explained it to you try to write it in five to six sentences and try to explain the same thing to me okay and and that will probably tell me that okay yeah you're sorted all right cool that was all from this particular use case i hope this was helpful this was fruitful i'll see you in the ne next use case which is the last use case and then we move on to our curriculum with new chapters all right awesome thank you i'll see you in the next one bye